So sustainability is such a buzzword at the moment, and that's the subject of today's video, sustainability in fashion for midlife and beyond. So in this video, I've got three tips to think about when we're considering the idea of sustainability in fashion. I'm Alexandra Alenska, and I've worked as a creative director and stylist for luxury brands, including Chanel Celine and Vanessa Bruno, as well as magazines, including Vogue and Harper's Bazaar. And I've been featured in international press, including Forbes, Elle, The Sunday Times, and The Independent. I now help directors and leaders in midlife and beyond to rebalance that work, 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 busy, busy, busy lifestyle you've become accustomed to because you know life's too short to stay in that career driven comfort zone. I help you to redesign and restyle your life, especially at midlife with life changing transitions such as the breakup of relationship, divorce, menopause or turning 40 and beyond. From your home and your wardrobe to your mind and social life, I help you with your stylish next chapter to step into your best life because I know you're ready to rock life again. Of course, the idea of sustainable fashion in itself is a bit of a contradiction. Fashion is about the latest trends. You know, you've often heard this expression, I'm sure, style is eternal. You know, fashion fades, but style is eternal. Style is a self-expression. It's an expression of your soul and your values and your personality. It's much more exciting and fundamental than fashion itself. Fashion is a tool that we can use to stay elegant and relevant at midlife and beyond. So sustainable fashion is a bit of a contradiction because fashion is about buying the latest trends. It's about buying more and more. Consumer culture in today's capitalist world seems to be just accelerating, that we're just buying more, 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 more. So my advice for any of you wanting to look towards a sustainable wardrobe at midlife and beyond is, first of all, to take a leaf out of the French book and don't just go and buy loads of stuff all the time. I'm sure you've heard that old adage, to buy less and to buy better. French style is all about building your wardrobe through the years and having things that are made to last. So you buy more carefully with more intentionality. Of course, it's okay to buy the odd trend piece, to pep up your wardrobe and to lift your spirits, but we don't want to be relying on that, especially at midlife, as a short-term sort of quick fix. Instead, we want to focus on buying the best quality that we can afford um, and not being sucked in by all of the, you know, the social media around us that's encouraging us to buy, buy, buy. I've just made a video about vintage shopping um, at Midlife and Beyond. And of course, vintage is such a buzzword at the moment, partly because of this new, we could say, trend for sustainability. Although I completely agree with the journalist Susie Menkes, who was recently addressing fashion students, design students. And she said, you know, that sustainability really should just be at the heart of everything that the fashion industry stands for at the moment. We can no longer ignore fast fashion practices, for example, where we exploit people as well as the environment around the world. It needs to be a starting point for every collection. Well-made pieces out of good quality fabrics are going to be a little more sustainable because they last for longer. And especially if you buy more classic styles and really invest in those as a longer term piece for your wardrobe. The last thing we want to be doing is to be filling landfill with clothes that have fallen to pieces very quickly and that we just dispose of. In France, you'll also find on every street corner in every arrondissement, you'll find a retouche. It's like um, an alterations uh, person or people, and they can also mend your things. They also have incredible cobblers all over Paris, some of which are better than others. So we still very much have in the spirit of French fashion, this idea of looking after your clothes, that when you bring something into your wardrobe, you want it to last. And therefore you're not just gonna like pack it in, jam packed into the wardrobe on a little wire dry cleaning hanger. You want it to last, you've invested money into it. Um, and now you're investing energy into wearing it and looking your best. So you want to keep it, you know, looking its best as well. So not only can you get things mended, um, and in previous videos I've also mentioned there's a new trend sort of with this rise of sustainability um, of companies that really can repair some of your clothes, companies like Restory in London for instance, which just means that your clothes and accessories are going to last for longer. So it's not really about just having cheap things that get holes in quickly and that wear out quickly that you can't really repair, it's about having quality pieces that when they do get holes in them, you know, 
those annoying pesky moths, for example, that the jumpers or the knitwear or whatever it is that you have can still be mended and still look really great. It's incredible the sort of invisible mending services that you can get these days. And of course in France, every cool French girl will tell you that they love vintage denim. Vintage denim is so great because it feels softer, you know, it doesn't have that stretch in it. I personally love denim that's got a bit of stretch in because it's it's more comfortable. But in France, you know, they love that traditional denim that's that's been washed down and become softer through wearing it and through washing it. So French girls are always on the lookout for the perfect pair of vintage sort of denim in that very bright sort of blue that we associate with French uh, style. But of course that means that it does become threadbare as well and you can get some incredible services these days where you can actually embroider over the holes and the tears and things that can make your jeans just look even more unique no matter how long you've had them for. This reminds me of one of my earliest jobs in fashion where I found some vintage jeans and sent them to Tom Ford and they became the basis of one of his collections when he was the creative director for Gucci and Yves Saint Laurent back in the late 90s and early 2000s. Wonderful denim with embroidery all over over it. You don't have to go that far and have crazy embroidery all over your jeans, but it's amazing the different types of customization that you can get these days. So tip two is to buy what you love and to be prepared for a shopping trip so that you're not tempted by little frivolities or at least have a separate shopping budget for frivolities. So when you go shopping, maybe think about the following things. Buy what you love, buy what you feel amazing in, buy for all year round, and when you bring something into your wardrobe, make sure that you can think of at least four different ways that you can wear it. So four outfits that you can wear something in. That's gonna help you to make sure that you have pieces that you can mix and match with each other, um, such as in my Simple Style 6 system. And I've got a whole playlist of my Simple Style 6 videos that you can find on this channel. So partly we've seen the rise of vintage and secondhand, and especially of the luxury secondhand market as a sustainable alternative to things that we can have that are better quality. And remember things that are made say 10 or 20 years ago were sometimes made at a better standard, generally speaking, than clothes that are made today as fast fashion has really taken a hold of the industry. Um, maybe it's turning, maybe it's on its way out, let's see. We're also seeing the rise of clothing rental, that you can rent designer goods. And sometimes this is heralded as an answer towards sustainability or a step towards sustainability in the fashion industry. Personally speaking, I'm not so sure about this. I prefer, as I said, that French approach to building your wardrobe, to having those things that you love. For me, your style is also infused with memories and emotions. In part of my Next Level You method, when you bring something new into your wardrobe, you can give it your own mantra, and it has the memory um, of that mantra with it, within it when you wear it, so that your clothing can actually be empowering as well as make you look and feel great. You're not going to have that same feeling if you just have a million and one little bits and pieces and an exploding wardrobe. I personally have some problems with the clothes rental market because first of all, it encourages this idea of frivolity and you know newness, which is great if you just want to try out some new styles, but maybe not so great for a longer term strategy. Also, I find that many people, when they try the clothing rental, you don't know what's going to fit you. You know, it's like when you go into a store and you try many things on before finding things that really fit you very well. So this means there is actually a lot of wastage within the clothing rental aspect because not everything that you rent is going to fit you first off and you can't get it altered because you've only got it for a limited amount of time. You've also then got the postage costs um, and the sustainable impact of the postage, the packaging and also of the dry cleaning that goes on in between clients thankfully. So none of that is particularly great for the environment either so I think rental isn't perhaps the most sustainable option as it's sometimes touted to be. And tip three is don't be sucked in by greenwashing. Sustainability can mean many things to different brands and to different people. There's the sustainability aspect of the damage that many of the dyes do to the environment, for example, or the leather tanning process. There's also the human cost that comes into sustainability of people being mistreated working in factories all over the world, for example. And I have to say that sometimes it can be a little bit misleading because we, we can think of this being an issue with only fast fashion, but some luxury brands can also have issues with sustainability. Of course, the clothes last longer, perhaps, as we've mentioned earlier, but there are even some factories in Italy, for example, that are now, um, have been bought out by Chinese owners and are essentially, you know, sweatshops in disguise, where they don't necessarily have that heritage 
um, and tradition of impeccable craftsmanship that we, you know, have come to love. So we just have to be a little bit wary of these things, not just to think it's a it's a problem with only fast fashion. There are also those brands that sort of very much market themselves on being sustainable. I have to say some sustainable brands are particularly hempy um, and perhaps not necessarily about style. There's also brands, of course, like Stella McCartney, who has founded her whole brand on the idea of sustainability. But I think what's important is that each of us has to consider what's significant to us. You know, are you a vegan and you're not interested in um, wearing leather, for example? That's completely valid. But then I urge you to think about the alternatives. You know, there are some great alternatives to leather out there. Even Hermes is looking at mushroom leather, for example. There's also sort of faux leathers made of pineapple skin or cactus that are quite interesting, but maybe not as durable. Maybe it's not going to last as long. So you have to think about the different sorts of impact on the environment. Maybe you don't want to wear real fur, but you want to wear faux fur, but that will come with its own set of environmental impacts. You know, essentially faux fur is made of plastic, um, which is, you know, necessarily um, a petrochemical, and that's not going to be great for the environment either. So whatever we do as human beings is about consumption, it's about waste. We have to just align our values as much as we can with our shopping and consumer uh, practices, whatever that may be. I hope this gives you a little bit of insight and guidance into the sustainability world. I'll do a separate video on my favorite sustainable fashion brands. So I hope that's given you a little bit of insight into sustainability practices and where you're at. Et voila, thank you so much for watching. À la prochaine, bye bye.